Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Before You Fuse, the show where I look at the upcoming fusions and then I let you know what I think about them. So today we're going to be talking about the upcoming fusion for August, uh, June, July, August. Yeah, August. And um, we're looking at Scored, Scored the Half Spawn. So on Thursday, August 1st, they're going to be launching this fusion event. Now let's go ahead and look at this kit. I haven't looked at everybody else's, um, what do you call it, videos. I haven't really looked too much into what other people are saying on purpose because you guys know me. I don't want to have a biased opinion. I want to go in um, without any type of confirmation bias or, or whatever you want to call it. Attacks one enemy. This is the A1. 50% chance of applying a debuff spread effect. Okay. Taking a hex debuff and then placing it on all enemies. If the target isn't under a hex, it's going to spread one other random debuff instead. This is not bad. I don't think there's anything, you know, trashy about this. This is, uh, I'd say it's pretty decent on an A1. Now, it's not 100%. It does book up to a 60%. Sniper, 65% to place the debuff spread. Can you think of anybody else who does this? I know Tuanarok does it, but I mean, how many people have Tuanarok? I know Vizier did something like this on his A3, I think. A2 attacks one enemy before attacking places, increase attack on this champion for two turns, then repeats the attack on all enemies under a hex buff, debuff. This attack will ignore shields against targets under a hex buff. All right, so there's like three, two things going on. Yeah, three things. Well, there's a few things going on here. We're hitting one enemy. Before attacking, we get an increased attack buff. He's an attack-based champion. Then he's going to repeat the attack. I wonder how hard he hits. It says he repeats the attack on all enemies who have a hex debuff on them. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean he's going to hit one person or one Hydra head? And then if the other Hydra heads have a hex, he's going to run up to them one by one too and try to hit them? Because that's that animation would take a while. This attack ignores shield. Against Hydra, I don't really think shields are a problem. Maybe if you're talking about that that uh, shield, that life barrier, I don't know if that counts as a shield. In Arena, this really depends if you're going up against somebody who has shields. I mean, I can think of a few cases, but I don't, I don't think every instance of an Arena fight that I've been in, I have to deal with shields. But then the qualifier is you have to have them under Hex, so it's kind of a little bit... Of, of a weird thing. AoE for the A3. Before attacking, places Hex on all enemies for two turns. Nothing wrong with that. This is a three-turn cooldown, keeping Hex. Now it says placing. So we're not going to have to worry about weak hitting or anything. Because it's just placing. So all the Hydra heads are going to get the Hex. Easy day. The damage inflicted by this skill increases by 20. Is this a plus 20 right here? So plus 40? Or just 20 for this specific part and then the total skill um, damage from the AoE is a plus 20. Anyway, increases for each hex debuff placed. You still will need accuracy. Which is kind of weird because if he's a damage dealer, an attack based champion, you need to build him with accuracy. That's not always the best thing. Me personally... I don't like having to build a champion with, you know, different stat priorities. I, I prefer to just double down on one thing, right? If I have a damage dealer, I want to just pretty much pump out as much damage as, as I can on him and focus on that. If I need to have a speed champion, all I want to care about is speed. Somebody like Lady Kimmy, Arbiter, heals this champion by 20% of their max HP for each hex debuff resisted or blocked. Now, heals this champion by 20% of their max HP. Is this a Hydra thing here? Why would we need to heal our own max HP for each hex resisted? So if you don't build them with accuracy, you get this instead. An AoE with a heal. I don't know why, but I'm thinking Sand Devil for some reason. But then again, probably not. What am I thinking? It's not like he's going to solo the Sand Devil, right? How hard does he hit? Places a hex. 
the more debuffs you have. Nah, I don't know what I'm thinking. Never mind. Fills this champion's turn meter by 10% when attacking targets without a hex debuff. Ignores 15% of a target or 15% of a target's defense when they're under a hex debuff. So, a very hex inclusive champion. <clears throat> Pardon me. But he's also kind of weird, in my opinion. There is nothing in this kit that stands out to me and says, yeah, I, I want to go for this fusion. And you guys know me at this point. If you don't know me, you're about to find out. I haven't really gone for a fusion since Armand's, I think. There's no real, as, as an end gamer, and I'm speaking for myself again, so I think your name is Turtle Shelland or whatever. Don't put a blanket statement over people. Um, I, I personally don't think I'm going to go for this fusion. Who might this be for? You know, this, this kit seems like it might be decent for somebody who's looking to do better in Hydra. You know, Hex is nothing to, to scoff at, right? If you don't have good cursed gear or you're struggling to get cursed gear, and for some reason you just you just can't get it to drop in high school. Whatever excuse or reason you have, it's valid. I get it. This might be a decent way to get hex on all of the Hydra heads. Again, it's nothing to scoff at, it's nothing to sneeze at. I don't really know what that means, but I've heard people say it. It's night and day, bro. The difference in Hydra. When you have Hex and you can keep that Hex up all the time versus not having Hex, it's night and day. The difference, mate, it's night and day. Now, getting somebody to do Hex for you is pretty pretty nice to have. I mean, this move right here is going to be pretty nice. I don't know what his multipliers are going to be like, so I can't really attest to what he's going to be like in, in other areas of the game outside of Hydra. But then again, my, my mindset is Hydra because that's really all we can do right now even with the release of siege um yeah now to my understanding there was another champion who did something kind of like this right where's uh was it a knight revenant mayor erics mayor Phoenix? i thought there was another champion that had hex wasn't she like a free champion too Because it seems like a... Let me see here. Lanicus. Marinix. This one right here. Attacks one enemy. 50% chance to place two extra hits if the target is under Hex. The chance, place to, the chance to place an extra hit is calculated individually. AoE decreased defense and Hex. So, I mean, I, don't, I forgot how you get Marinix, but I mean, if you're looking for a... Uh, is she a Doom Tower champion? Login champion? I forget. I have her. Never used her. AoE decreased defense and Hex. Buffs up to 100%. Three turn cooldown. This is pretty nice here. AoE, ignore unkillable. Shield, places unkillable. If this attacks, um, kills an enemy without a Hex debuff, place unkillable. Resets the cooldown of an inexorable, inexorable, exorable, inexorable end, which is this one. AoE ignores unkillable and shield if they're under Hex. Increase the champion's attack by 5% for each hex. I mean, this seems sort of similar. Maybe he's like a... a I don't know. A ripoff of her. Um, yeah, so who, who is this going to be for? Probably those people struggling in Hydra who want a reliable, quote-unquote, way to get hex. Uh, somebody let me know where we get Marinix from, please. But yeah. Um... For me, I don't know if I'm gonna go for him, but let's see if we can find anybody in you guys know me. We go to we go to Reddit, we see what people are saying. All right, what do you think? I think I have to wait and see. I'm undecided. Okay, so a, a good majority of people are saying scored is a you know what? This is not the dog. Where's the dog? We were we were promised a dog. A dog champion to go with Sky Sky Reaper or whatever his name is. Packmaster. A lot of people are saying he's about good or average. Being a pretty straightforward damage dealer. Is he though? Utilize like I feel like you're gonna have to build him with 
Speed, attack, and accuracy. That those are the the priority stats I'm looking at. Most likely average 2024's Marinix. Wow. Yeah. Exactly. Marinix uh 2024. A max Marinix and I have zero use for her. Pretty worthless. Final decision for damage dealers only can be made after multipliers uh disclosure. That's true. Because this guy could hit like a fucking truck and that would change the entire narrative, right? If his multipliers were on the same scale of like, I don't know, uh, Rodos, I'm thinking like my favorite damage dealer, Rodos, Kandrophon, Taurus, freaking Narcis. If this guy hits as hard as they do, everybody's going to be wanting this champion. So it's kind of hard to, to make a decision on that, which is why I'm still undecided. I don't feel like I'm going to need him because I have a decent amount of damage dealers, but you know. Uh, so far, it looks good for Hydra. Average in high arena, in my opinion. Sheep Magnet, that's true. No counter for Stone Skin. Defensive buffs, pretty low ignorance defense. Compare with Georgid, for example. Only one drawback is why is he not a must have for Hydra? He's not a doggy. Not a Trunda. And no other DPS needed but her in late game. Final decision for damage dealers only can be made after multiple uh, disclosures, along with the base stats. What are his base stats? Did we even see his base stats? No, we did not see his base stats. By Stofus wants a word. Previous highest base attack in the game hits like a wet noodle due to multipliers. Damn. Uh, Teox teams, unless this dude does insane, insane damage, he looks like a skip. He, he does look like the easiest skip. If his multipliers are good, this dude is going to be a god tier nuker. Yeah, so everybody's kind of just like, if a lot of endgame players are, are just kind of saying skip. Unless decent multiplier is dead on arrival. Dude looks awesome in terms of appearance. Yeah, he looks cool. But again, like I said, a lot of champions come out looking cool. But you know what I mean? Seems like a solid hex machine for Hydra that should hit hard. At the very least, Hydra... In Hydra, Hex is going to allow you to do more damage. So at the end of the day, where's the dog, right? Where's the dog? They keep talking about this dog. Everybody was promised a dog. That turtle shelling guy was like, mark my words. So the guy was like, I'm going to subscribe to you just so I can tell you that you're wrong. I want to see this dog so I can go back to his comment and, you know, drop a smiley face or something. No hate, no hate, no hate. It's all love. I like this fusion because it looks like one I can easily skip. Nothing really unique. Maybe a, may be a good damage dealer. And a hexer, but I've got plenty of those. Looks like I can save those resources. And again, if you're looking for options for hex that's reliable in Hydra, look no further than the one that you get from Hydra. Guys, where is this? Where's the chest? Mithrala, bro. Probably one of, like, the best generally useful in all areas from beginning to end game. Has a hex on her A2, guys. And you naturally build her with accuracy. So it's not like you have to worry too much about anything else. Like, she's a freaking A, S tier champion for all areas of the game, pretty much. I see her in arena. I see her in live arena. I see her uh, pretty much everywhere. And she's got the Hex with the increased attack and the increased defense. Poison's on the A1. Like, she can, she can, there's, if you build it right, she can solo some content for you. Debuff removal, strengthen, and a shield. Petrification, I think she's the only one that does petrification. Plus, she goes in with an extra 80. Like, if I have to choose between Mithrala and uh, whoever this half spawn is, I'm choosing Mithrala. Since he has no passive that can boost his stats like Razzlevar, Dinja, or Varl, Varl, he'll probably be an okay-ish damage dealer. This is an underrated statement. Most of the best damage dealers have built-in scaling on their kit, with a few exceptions. Looks solid, nothing fancy. Looks nice. As a newer player who's just starting to take Hydra more seriously, definitely be going for this guy. Yeah, and this is pretty, this is valid right here. This right here is a valid statement, a valid argument, and what I was alluding to when I said this is the type of person that's going to probably consider going for this type of champion. Looks kind of good, especially for Hydra, at least for early to mid game players like myself, in particular, the A3 being guaranteed. Exactly. It's a placement 
It's not it's not a weak hit, strong hit, anything. It's, it's a place. All right? Looks very useful. Get the job done, even without books, which are always too scarce. Edit, since people are in a... Ped- since, <laughs> I almost said pandemic. Since people are pedantic. Yes, quaint and pedantic. Let me rephrase. In particular, A3 not needing books to get 100% chance and not only requiring 215... Oh, and only requiring about 215 accuracy to get 97% land rate is pretty good for early to mid-game players. Where is he getting this 215 accuracy? In Hydra? I think you only need... Yeah, because Hydra normal to break or to... The minimum required accuracy, I think, is like 195. But as a general, as a general um, uh, rule of thumb, once you know somebody's or the your enemy's resistance, and you want to have accuracy to overcome that resistance, you're gonna want to go maybe like 30 to 50 over. I personally like to build my champions with, if I can, 50 points over the required. So, like for an example, Sand Devil, I think, is like 500. Um, 500 accuracy needed or something like that. And I have a lot of my champions who are placing the debuffs built with like 550, for an example. His A3 is not guaranteed. He needs accuracy. Yes, this will take away from damage potential. But it is guaranteed once you get past the accuracy threshold. At least that's how I thought place works. That's why I implied it, especially on lower difficulties. It's not hard to get 200-ish accuracy. That's true. Normal and hard. Yeah, normal and hard, pretty easy. Yes, but it can also weak hit, so it can be resisted on force. No. Place doesn't mean weak hit or accuracy check. It's just a fixed 3% resist. Right? This is what I've been told. This is what I've been corrected by. The word place means place. In the same instance, like when we're using our mons, for example... His A3, whenever he sheeps somebody, uh, let me see if I can check him out here. His, uh, this move right here, places, right? So if I were to go into arena and test it out real quick, let me see. Uh, Armand's is weak against red affinity. So let's go here and let's try to place and we'll see if any weak hits or anything like that pops up here or if it just places. Right there. He it placed, he got sheeped, and that was that was it. Mum's the word. Right? So no. Weak hits do not matter when it comes to um anything that says place. He places before attack, so it's the accuracy versus resist roll only. Thanks for the clarification. A3 is not guaranteed, but it can't weak hit, not the same thing. You still need accuracy. Guys, duh. Fragment or oh yeah, this is the this is the next question. Is this a fragment fusion, or is this a traditional fusion? Most likely traditional or hybrid, since Packmaster was a fragment. Yeah, that's true. They were uh they were testing out a little bit. Let's see here. Oh, you know who we should check out? Let's go. I would take a plus four epic dog too. That's funny. Let's go to to. Hell Hades. Um, what's what's this guy's name? Uh, Half Spawn. There. All right. So. Here we go. We have, uh, let's see, there's a ton of good demon spawn. I'm, I'm seeing what people are saying on Hell Hades' episode, or uh, Hell Hades' uh, video. There's a ton of good demon spawn. They need to add some cool ones on a few underwhelming factions. That moment when you pour all your time and resources into the fusion, only to find out his multipliers suck. Do his multipliers suck? I haven't seen this video. I did click it on my TV, but then I was like, hold on, I don't want to get. Um, any, you know, any idea of what he might be like. A lot of conditionals here, likely to have high multipliers. HH, we're in the same group for the Ninja Six Star Soul. Currently one and two. Repeats the attack on every target. Sounds like he attacks every... Yeah, exactly. Every enemy enemy individually. To me, it sounds like it won't suffer from AoE damage reduction effects. 
Ghost Simon looking great already. Great vid, cool champ. Remember the ignorability shield can be good for Hydra if the cleansing head gets to chance. Oh, okay, so that does count as a shield then. Maybe. Shouldn't happen with a provoker in the team, but it could. That's true. Hope you and Lady A. I wonder if the A2 will ignore decay life barrier. Te technically, it's not a shield. Okay, so it is or it isn't. This is what I was thinking about too. Helicats A1 doesn't. This won't either. It won't. Pretty clear stuff. Okay, all right. Chill out, chill out, chill out. Pretty clear stuff. Duh. Guys, calm down. You don't have to be a dick about it. If he hits decently hard, putting him in a provoke set could be useful. Damage dealer plus a provoker hexer. Really? Yeah, I guess. There's nothing wrong with putting him in a provoke set. I mean, you're only worrying about provoking one, sh one head anyway. That's a pretty good idea. That's a pretty big, ba uh, big brain move here. The XL2K. If he hits decently hard, putting him in a provoke set could be useful. You'll have a damage dealer plus a provoker hexer, which can be hard to find for Hydra. Very good. Michinaki? Yeah. But then you're going to want multiple teams, right? If he adds burns, he would be right on top of Michinaki. I don't see the point of having a provoke and an attack champion to sustain the damage back. You're right. Let me just pull up my three Michinakis. Guys, you got to understand, not everybody's got three Michinakis. That's like the person saying, oh, just use a Krizia. Or, or, or just use Taurus. Like, bro, be real, bro. That's cool. That's cool that you got the champion. You got your, your double nuts. You got your three Michinakis. Go ahead. Go flex somewhere else. Not everybody's got that. All right? I'm also a culprit of doing this myself. I tell myself the same thing. Going to depend on the multipliers, though, I have a severe lack of demon spawn damage dealers. Paired up with Mithrala and Michinaki, plus a healer, reviver, and another support champ, you have a great Hydra team, if the multipliers are good. True. He seems very good. I think him needing accuracy is then offset with him doing more damage and ignoring defense. With some bonuses, we will be able to push close to true damage on targets while helping to have Hex out. There's only a few champions that can throw out a Hex out there, and he's placing it, which will be great. No weak hits to mess things up. Dumb three percenters. Yeah, can definitely pair him up with a hex champ, but he is a hex champ. What? Still built for damage. Any chance his A2 works like Trundas or Martial Eds? No. Where is it? Attacks one enemy. There's no splash damage. Right? Is that the question? Martial Eds? Oh, I see what he's saying. I, I was thinking about the debuff spread. Yeah, maybe. That's a good question. Who knows? I think I'll skip. I don't love skipping now that I could probably consistently go back to back, uh, go back to back for fusions. But I think I just need to take one off, and this one seems to be the one. Absolutely. 